I always get a goat's milk feta, all goat's milk feta. But I usually have to find a good um, Greek supply store to do that or Middle Eastern. Uh, I'm separating the eggs now. Uh, you can save the yolks if you like. Uh, I'm in a hurry. There are lots of ways to separate eggs. But I worked my way through college in the kitchens. And when the chef saw me sort of doing egg separatings with the shell and sort of slowly moving around, he sort of looked at me strange. He said, we're cooking for 200 here. <laughs> Got to go faster. Of course, he would crack two eggs in each hand. He had been in the Merchant Marines before he came to Williams College to be a chef. So. so, I don't know if you can tell, but this is beginning, now that I've added the uh, egg white, the meat mixture is beginning to come together. Uh, and so now I'm just sort of pulling, squeezing it together. It's like making a meatloaf, trying to get the flavors blended. Uh, and you can see the strands of potato that are there. Uh, when I diced the onion, that was the way I did it tonight. However, a lot of people, when making these meatballs, instead of dicing it fine, they'll grate that on the grater as well. Uh, hey, John, John, question. Um, if you can't find, um, crap, now I lost the question. If you can't find sumac, what else could you use? Uh, sumac's kind of, uh, I, I wouldn't use anything. What I would just do is often caftetas are uh, seasoned with uh, lemon juice. You could add a little extra lemon juice inside. Uh, usually you sprinkle lemon juice on top of them after they're made, but you could add lemon juice and that would uh, work. So. And uh, another question was how much salt? Not, you're not sure what the taste, what the taste should be. Well, I haven't put any salt in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start for two pounds of meat. I'm just going to start with uh, a teaspoon. And I'll add some more black pepper. This pepper mill we got at Sir La Pablo as well, I think, again, many years ago. Now I'll mix this up one more time. And then what I'm going to do is take, make a mini meatball. About the size of a grape. So it's sort of a mini keftetis. Just about this size there. And I'm going to put it on a plate. And I'm just heating it up till it cooks for about 40 seconds. Now you don't have to use a microwave. I'm using a microwave. If you want to take a small skillet and just uh, pour some olive oil in there and toss it, fry it. It only takes about a minute, minute and a half. Uh, but you want to check the blend of spices before you start making whatever 50, 50 years old. Who's having trouble? Well, it's recording now. John, we have a few more questions for you. Sure. One of the questions is why an egg white and not the whole egg? Uh, or can we use the whole egg instead of just the egg white? Use the whole egg, one egg. Uh, 
I've never had a full answer to that question, <laughs> although I've asked it, but uh, my sense is that it's the egg white that makes the better glue. Uh, and uh, that's why they do it. But it could be one of those cases, I do it because my mother did it or her, my wife's mother did it. And <laughs> there's no good. So now I have a mini meatball. So what you should get is a balance of the onion, uh, the cumin, salt and pepper. I like lots of pepper, so uh, I get criticized for that by some, but I never have enough black pepper. So that's pretty good. I'm gonna add a little more cumin. Just because I also like the cumin. That was only just about a quarter teaspoon, although it might look like more. And as I keep kneading this, the, the mixture is getting much more uh, sort of amalgamated, coming together, which will help the meatballs stick together when they're being fried. So one more mini ball. Wash my hands again. So what I'm gonna do once I get the mixture just right is I'm gonna let it sit for a little while I make the uh, tzatziki and then the salad. Uh, I won't put the dressing on the salad but I'll get this all ready, hot. Obviously, I didn't buy a hot pad at Sarlatawa. Yeah, that's better. Again, a nice balance of all of those ingredients. In a perfect world, I would let this sit for a half an hour to an hour for all the flavors to come together, but I've done it both ways. It doesn't make as much difference. Our alarm just went off for the potatoes. And you can see actually they're uh, browning nicely. I don't know if you can see that on the screen. And so now having seen them, I'll toss them. We can them. see it nicely, John. We can see everything. It's good. Uh, I'll toss them just a little and just to move the flavors, but having seen them, uh, I think I'll only cook them at, at this point for maybe another um, 10 minutes. I'll also try to make sure the onion goes over because I don't want to burn the onion too much. Uh, it's a fine line with onion between burning and uh, and adding flavor, if you will. <laughs> I know that our oven is hotter. It's a convection oven. It's hotter on the back than in the front. So every time I take it, I reverse it to try to uh, balance out the cooking a little. And I have to remember to put on the timer for 10 minutes. Okay, so next. Now for the talaturi or the, the tzatziki. Whoops. I have all my recipes in an old, uh, it used to be a Macintosh program. They have an app but it's going the way of the dodo, I think, because they haven't updated in a long time.
And I was stupid that I didn't print out the recipes I sent out with the package. Okay, so this is very easy. Um, it's simple ingredients. I'm just gonna take about a cup. Now normally if I was using, I'm using this yogurt, which I've actually never used before. Uh, it's an almond milk yogurt. But Greek yogurt, if you know, uh, is much thicker than most of the yogurts you get. So this is much thinner. If I had had the time and wanted to experiment, I might have tried um, straining this yogurt in a sieve through cheesecloth to get it thicker. But in this case, uh, it's I know it's going to be a thin yogurt and that's the way it's going to be. I'll just add a little extra garlic for more flavor. <laughs> we tend to feel that you can never have too much garlic as long as everybody shares in the meal. So there are lots of ways to peel garlic. Actually, Sir Latabla sells a little roller, silicone roller for peeling garlic. Uh, I, uh, I take off the, the root end, then squash it a bit, and it usually just comes straight out of the skin at that point. Hey John, we have a question about the meat. Was there garlic in the meat? No. I don't think I put any garlic. There usually isn't in that recipe. You could add it but there usually isn't. It, the flavors in the keftetis are, are, not, are, are more subtle and the garlic tends to overpower that a little. But it could, it clearly, cooking I always feel is sort of, you know, do whatever you like. If you like a lot of garlic, put garlic in it. Part of what, when I was working in an American school in Cyprus, part of our goal was to, uh, um, we had a lot of expatriate American students. And uh, so they missed their home cooking. So a lot of what we did there was to try to match up, I mean, I remember the first week I was there, we started talking about a barbecue they were gonna have for the students when they arrived at this boarding school. And I had to teach the Cypriot chefs how to make hamburgers because <laughs> they made them for me, but it wasn't what I considered a hamburger. It was full of all these green things, either uh, fresh coriander or parsley. I'm not saying that's bad, but it's not what the students would have been expecting. One of the dishes that we served about 200 in that kitchen. Uh, I was assistant head, but one of my responsibilities was the kitchen. And, uh, one of the favorite things that the kids got was kernel, uh, canned kernel corn, you know, the yellow uh, kernel corn. Uh, they loved it. It, was, it reminded them of home. It wasn't something they got wherever they were, their family was hanging out at that point. A lot of them were blue collar workers who, uh, who took jobs in Saudi Arabia at the oil rigs. And so they just dropped their kids off at our school and went off uh, to make more money. So this is a lot of garlic. You can see uh, it's more than I would normally do. I'd put about half this usually uh, but because this is uh, almond milk yogurt, I'm overcompensating. Uh, and once you put the garlic in, this is another thing that benefits, uh, sorry, it's hot in here, uh, that benefits from sitting for a while. Now, the other thing, this is fairly watery. Uh, yogurt, so I am not going to add as many cucumbers as the recipe originally called for. Uh, I am going to peel them, but these are uh, sort of 
semi-seedless cucumbers. I think you can buy them in almost any supermarket nationwide now. They're sometimes called Middle Eastern. They're sometimes called snacking cucumbers. Uh, but because they don't have seeds, I can use the whole thing uh, and just take the peel off. So John, since this is a meat meal, right? what would we use for the almond milk? Because we can't use milk. Almond milk is 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 kosher. No, but is it dairy? Almond no. milk is parv, Danny. It's parv. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the time, yeah. Most of the time, yeah. Most of the time, okay. On dairy equipment, but, but but some of it's OU. <laughs> you know. All right. Thank you. Now I'm just putting the cucumber into a small dice. Um, I always flatten at least one side, and you've all seen this a thousand times probably, uh, or done it a thousand times. What do they say, matchsticks and then, uh, or flat layers and then matchsticks or something like that. But you can see there are no real uh, seeds in this cucumber. At my age, I've come to the conclusion that trying to use a knife like uh, Bobby Flay or somebody like that who does it all the time leads to serious cuts. <laughs> so I slow down. My technique's not terrible, but it, I definitely go slower. So now we got the cucumber, the garlic. It's a little more watery than I'd like it. If you get good quality uh, uh, Greek yogurt, or you can uh, try to strain one of the almond. They also make a coconut milk uh, yogurt that might be thicker. I just don't have a lot of experience with that. Uh, what have I done? So cucumber, now. You have a choice at this point of fresh mint or dried mint. We uh, have, uh, in our backyard, we have mint as a weed. <laughs> so it's taking over one of our small gardens. So we happen to have a lot of fresh mint. But we also always keep, uh, uh, and by the way, you might be interested, this is uh, sage. These are sage flowers here. Are kind of neat. We have a lot of sage too. But I'll use the fresh mint today then. And all of these have been washed. And I actually, I think I'm going to add some of the dried mint too. because we always have dried mint in the house. And I grind it between my fingers to make it sort of small as it goes in. And uh, then back to, uh, this is a teaspoon of salt I'm putting in uh, for that amount. It'll bring out the flavors. Another Sur La Table tool. I also like to add, just a second. Okay, to me, these look just about done here. So. I'll put them on the side. Uh, what I will do actually is turn off the oven to cut down on the uh, heat. And like I do with a lot of things, 
The other thing you can add to this if you choose, it depends on your yogurt and how uh, sour it is, but uh, since I've tasted this, I'm gonna add a little lemon juice in this. With garlic and lemon juice and oregano, uh, most Greeks, uh, this will make it thinner but it'll add a little more flavor. This is my lemon squeezer that, yes, I did buy at the Cermatol recently. I find it convenient. No seeds. So if you look at this, this is much thinner than I would get with my normal Greek yogurt, but it'll still work. It's the same, tastes about the same. There's that and that. So where are we at time? I got half an hour. I may not get through all the meatballs in the half an hour, but we'll try. Can you still hear me, Danny? Can you still hear me? Yes, I'm you're just fine. Here you're just fine, John. Just let me know. I'm turning the fan above the stove so that it. Uh, I'm also going to move this. I don't know if that helps or not. I, I'm looking at the picture of the skillet on the other uh, video too. So. so we've got meatballs and what I like to do is I use a scoop to make them. But one of the things they always recommend is uh, wetting your hands a little as you make meatballs so that it helps them come together. So the meatball I'm looking for, these can be, it, uh, the size, I like to think of a little smaller than a golf ball, about like that. That happens to be just about exactly what fits in this scoop here. So that helps me to keep them all about the same size. What I may end up doing is just doing the one, uh, the one batch and then make the salad so that we don't run out of time. Real exciting here. I suppose I could have made a whole batch up ahead of time, but I, again, I thought that might be cheating, so. Um, violating one of my mother's golden rules. When I was growing up, I must have been about 12 or 13, my mother decided to make French fries at home. We had a big kitchen. We did not have a TV in the kitchen and the PGA championships were just ending. And she got caught up in watching 
the golf championship and forgot that she had hot oil on the stove. That was a bad thing. When she came back into the kitchen, there were 10 foot flames. I said, this is another one of my favorite gadgets of Sir Latawa. I'm gonna to try to get it up to 350. Right now it's only at about 150. Is that the Thermopen, John? That's the Thermopen. This is John's favorite item. So when you come into the store and you're gonna buy a cheap, you thought you were gonna buy a cheap $20 thermometer, you'll leave if you see John with the $99 Thermopen, which is at the wrap stand. Well, what I'll say honestly is that I've had a half dozen of the cheap 10 or $15 thermometers, and they've all broken over a little time. But my thermopen I've had for a long time, even gone through one battery already, and one of the nice things about thermopen, it has a AAA battery. So it's easy to replace as opposed to those sort of little uh, discs that you get uh, sometimes at CBS. Okay, so I ended up making more than I probably fit in the pan, but. Well, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna shift this over while we're waiting for the oil to heat up. And in fact, because I get nervous, I have another, this is another tool I bought a long time ago at Sir uh, Table, but it's a uh, like a candy thermometer. But what it'll do is show me instantly what the temperature is without me having a stick. John, did you say it's 350 degrees? Uh, that's what I aim for, yes. Where is my other cutting board? I don't see my other cutting boards. Oh, wait a second. I said I had two of them. The second one's over here. So, time for the salad. This is basically what you would just call a chopped salad. Uh, at least it starts out that way. Uh, in Cyprus, they use romaine lettuce because it has body. Uh, and uh, I'm cutting it into about quarter inch slices. It's funny because before I went abroad, I had never had a chopped salad. Yet, it seems to be a very common thing, but my dad would, grew in his retirement, uh, he was a chemist, and he grew, had a huge garden, and he um, prided himself in the variety of lettuces and herbs that he would put. Now, with these big tomatoes, it all depends on the season and what you uh, can get at the store, but I don't want to add too much moisture to my salad. So what I'll usually do is what I'm doing here, which is seed the tomatoes. I had already washed them. Then I'm just slicing out the pulp. Uh, you can save that if you want, put it in a tomato sauce or something, but then I'll uh, uh, slice them into smaller pieces. This is not something you see very often in Cyprus, but that's because in Cyprus, all lemons, all tomatoes are, are of a different quality than I'm used to getting. Even I came from farm country, but particularly lemons. I said the potatoes were a big item in Cyprus. So were lemons. 
and oranges. They were one of the top orange juice suppliers to Saudi Arabia. And their lemons are sweeter than anything I had ever had. Still lemony, but uh, sweeter. So that's one tomato tossed in. Uh, with the salad, uh, even though I wash the cucumber, I don't, uh, for a salad, I don't peel it with this type of cucumber. If you were using a pickling cucumber, I would peel it because I know that some people have problems digesting the thick uh, cucumber skin, but these are designed not to need that. Just like the English cucumbers that you probably see in supermarkets. We got cucumber. This is a Cubanelle pepper. I said green bell peppers. You can use either. Uh, the Cubanelle is a, uh, has a more delicate flavor, I think. Uh, it's an Italian. So we like this. Okay. That's why I like that, because it has an alarm. So what I'm going to do here is I use my spider here to gently, carefully put these meatballs in, and I pour them away from me. I don't know if you can see this. And then I, I put a timer up, not so much because I'm going to hit a set time, uh, but I will turn them over as I'm going. Uh, and I'm expecting with meatballs this size, after about three minutes, I'm going to, I'm going to sort of toss them in the oil to toss them over. And... Uh, I'm looking for them to turn golden brown. Maybe you can see, I don't know if you can see there. Can you see that, Danny? Yes, definitely. So they're already beginning to brown even on the top. So now I'm going to Turn them over. You don't need this much oil. Uh, I put it in because it makes it go a little faster. You could use half this. I did not, as the recipe calls for olive oil, I did not use olive oil. If you have a good Middle Eastern Italian market, uh, ask them for olive oil for frying. You don't want to fry with. Uh, extra virgin olive oil. It's, it's a finishing oil. So, but they all have uh, uh, lower level oils for frying. And the interesting thing is extra virgin olive oil has a relatively low burn point, which means with your non-stick pans and all of that, if you're trying to saute with extra virgin olive oil, you can gum up even the non-stick pans. But uh, the lower quality olive oils have a higher burn point, closer to grapeseed oil or some avocado oil, which have high burn points. I'm trying to get my head out of that light. That is not, definitely not a halo. John, uh, we have a couple of questions for you. John? Yeah, I'm listening. So if, if some of our uh, audience today doesn't have a thermopen, they only have a meat thermometer. Right, that'll work fine, it's just aim at 350. As soon as you put the meatballs in, it's going to go down. So that, so they want to know if there's another way to see if the oil is hot enough. Yes, you can also take uh, some bread and toss it in. And uh, the judge by how quickly the, the bread browns, you definitely want it to be browning. And the faster it browns, uh, the faster the bubbles come out. Uh, the, the hotter the oil will be. 
It just takes a little practice getting to know your own stove, your own pot. I often do this in a cast iron uh, lodge pot, which is bigger. Again, if I'm making 100 of them, uh, that works. These are browning up nicely. It hasn't even been four minutes yet. The safety measure, I always have the top to the pan nearby for uh, frying because um, if something were to happen, if you can get the top on the pan right away, the other thing to do if the fire comes on is to dump uh, salt into it, which will drop the flame point in the oil and hopefully help put out the flame. Um, I'm trying to think what I haven't put in the salad yet. Uh, this is an interesting product that I bought at uh, Wegmans yesterday. This is a vegan feta cheese, which I had never heard of before. So I'm going to put that on just because I have it. Um, it tastes all right. The texture is different from what normal feta cheese would be. But the flavor isn't bad. It's just a little different. So now my meatballs have been in now for almost five minutes. I'm using my thermal pen to measure their doneness. Again, if you don't have a meat thermometer, take one out. I'll do that, actually. I'm going to take them all out right now because they're, uh, they're done. You can see what they look like. And then I always sprinkle with a touch of salt right after I get things out of the fryer. That's because the oil is disappearing quickly, but while it's still there, it will allow uh, So we're down to 315 now. So normally what I would do is again let it get up to 350. But what I was saying is, if I don't have a meat thermometer, what I'll do is take the meatball and cut it open and look at it. Is it done? Then you take a piece and check it out. Be careful because it's hot. But these are definitely done. They'll actually continue to cook for a little after you take them out of the oil. The FDA recommends uh, for ground meat 165 degrees. So as long as you've gotten them over 165, they're relatively safe and cooked. Well, the reason I like the thermal pen is because it's fast. Uh, okay, so just to get things together a little. Oh, I remember what I haven't put in there. I put the set of cheese, but I didn't put the Kalamata olives yet. Now, Danny hates Kalamata olives. So that's why I bought them. But uh, these have their pits in them. You don't have to leave the pits in them. Uh, again, these days, everybody seems to know about olives. The Greek Kalamata olive uh, often is brine. And so what my wife will do is she will soak these in water for 24 hours and then uh, rinse them off and rehydrate them a little with lemon juice, uh, uh, coriander seed, uh, 
I'm trying to think, probably a little sumac uh, and so on, uh, a little salt and pepper. And then they get sort of marinated in that uh, and it's taken away some of the disagreeable flavors that people find. So usually when serving this, what I'll do is sprinkle just a touch of oregano on top. Like this, and this is the finished tzatziki. Can you see that? I can. Uh, then the salad now has, I think, all of the ingredients. You probably were watching and would be able to tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, but now what I do is I sprinkle a little salt on it. Of course, it all depends on how much salad and how much. A little pepper. A little of the sumac. And for this amount of uh, salad, I'm just going to put half a lemon, but again, this is all to taste. And then a little olive, just for those who are interested, I said we buy our olive oil at Eric's now. This is uh, olive oil from Messina, uh, which they are now carrying. I used to get it at a place, Sophia's in Belmont, Massachusetts, but her prices went up so fast that I got Eric's to buy it. <laughs> now I buy it from them. So now I'm just sort of matching the lemon juice with a little extra olive oil there. Double check the temperature here. Actually for now, what's our time? I have time for one more batch. So this is what the salad looks like before you toss it. Um, everybody, most people have had Greek salads. The, um, the combination of the oregano, I did put oregano on there, didn't I? No, I did. The oregano, sumac, salt and pepper with fresh ingredients. Uh, this uh, salad bowl has an interesting story. We actually have nesting salad bowls here. They're all from the same trunk and they were made by my great grandfather in, yes, New York City. He was a contractor in New York City back in the turn of the century, 19th to 20th century. Okay, so one, two. How are we doing for time, Danny? You have five minutes. Yep.
Okay. Cafetas, lime slices, Greek salad, uh, and the uh, talatuli zadziki. John. John. Yes. A couple, a couple of people would like your address because they'd like to come over now for dinner. <laughs> he does live in Belmont, and the person who asked you lives in Maryland. So, uh, not sure how that's going to work. A bit of a drive. Another um, Temple Emanuel person just said, bravo, Yoshikawa, mazel tov. Great job. Well, thank you. Kopiaste, I think the Greeks say. Eat well. Great. My well, wife managed not to come out here while we were doing this, but I think she was listening to every word I said. Do you recommend a wine with this, John? Well, my experience in uh, Cyprus, it's hard to find good Cypriot wine. So I would recommend, uh, actually what most people eat with Tethetis, they drink beer, but a, uh, a good full-bodied wine, uh, would, red wine would work well. Retzina? <laughs> well, that brings back bad memories from my first two years in Greece. But uh, yeah, Retzina would work it's, it, as well as it works with anything. John, thank you so much. That was terrific. So My pleasure. My first try at this type of thing. So No, that was great. So I'm going to be visiting uh, you and uh, Scott tomorrow in my journeys around Newton. So I expect to have a plate of this. Um, uh, and uh, so for those of you, um, those on still on the call, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we recorded most of this. Uh, and uh, we're going to do this again. And um, if you're interested in teaching, uh, we would love to have that. If hopefully everyone, Elliot, do you want to talk a little bit about if you haven't signed up? Yes. Am I unmuted? You are uh, unmuted. Okay. All right. So if anybody didn't sign up and re register for this, then you, we don't have your email to let you know about our next session. So I'm going to put a link on here right now and you take it. And that way, anybody who wants to be on our list, because we hope to be doing this on a regular basis, just take this link. I'm, uh, long link. I even shortened it. I'm not sure what to do. Um, I guess I got an idea. I'm going to give you my email, which isn't so hard. Everyone's, John, everyone's saying it looks delicious. Everyone. Thank you. Looks to be deceiving, right? <laughs> but try it. I think you'll like it. And to everybody who's, on the, who's still on the Zoom call, we're so glad you joined with us. And our hope is, is that, you know, you'll be with us the next session and also spread the word because the more people we have, the better it will be. And again, you know, this is presented by the Federation Jewish Men's Club, the men's organization of the conservative movement. You know, we get guys involved. That's what our, our mission is. Done so much. Thank you so much for your good work. And our, um, our fearless John, president John, recommends John, that we have this at convention Thursday night. Elliot and Danny, thank you very much. And uh, if this works, this is my Shabbos dinner tomorrow night. So <laughs> if it doesn't work, pizza, I don't know. <laughs> We're looking forward to it. And I look forward to the next one. Thank you guys very, very much. And John, this was wonderful. Tom, I did make it. It is Shabbos dinner for tomorrow. You're exactly right. Ex excellent. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. Chinese last week. We'll do Greek this week. All right, everyone. Thank you, John. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Great job. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everyone. John, thank you. Thanks a lot, Danny. Great job. This was a lot of fun. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks for your help, too. Good job, Danny. Thanks. Here's Tim Cranning, New York. Here's the whole country. Danny, thank you. That was fun. Scott, tomorrow, I expect the plate. I have one meatball left. Everything else was I eaten. More than you. Uh, so but I'll bring that. So That's okay. Enjoy it. Roast, roasted potatoes. <laughs> Enjoy. You have it tomorrow for lunch. All right. All right. Take care. All right, everyone. Take Enjoy care. This. Bye. Bye.